Okay, we're ready to do some wiring. This is part three of my soldering and studio wiring course. Uh, part one was on choosing a soldering iron. Part two was on basic soldering technique. And now we're going to start soldering some audio connectors and cables. What I have here is Megami microphone cable. Relatively standard stuff, three conductors. Three conductors are required for balanced audio signals. The three conductors are ground, hot, and cold. In this case, the outer shield jacket here is the ground and the shield. The red is hot. The colored wire is hot and then the clear is cold. On some brands of wire, the cold signal will be black is pretty common. But this is pretty uh, basic stuff that you would be using to wire audio. It is suitable for either line level or microphone level. So in the second video, I showed you a couple different types of wire strippers. Let's strip this wire using the, the kind that I like. Uh, and then I'll show you how you can do it with those. And these, what you can just adjust and just nick into the outer jacket. Be careful, don't go through the inner insulation. If you want to be a little safe, you can sometimes pull it down a little further from where you cut and pull it off. Okay, not bad. So now you see the, the shield is around the other two wires. And what you want to do is pull that all separate. And you want to get all the strands and twist them tightly together. Make sure you don't leave any loose ones. What I'm going to do is cut off about, I guess, an eighth of an inch of that insulation and make the other one match it as close as possible. All right, so that's ready for tinning, which I'm going to show you in a second. But in case you were using this type of stripper, the one trick I want to show you is what you need is a single edge razor blade. And what you want to do is hold the blade so it doesn't completely protrude between your fingers. And then you can just put it down on the outer jacket and put like a little score in the jacket. Be careful not to cut the insulation on the inner wires. Peel all that back. And then cut it off if you're using this type of stripper. In this case, the inner wire, I believe, is 24 gauge. So what you would look for if you're using one of these preset type strippers is the number 24. This actually goes to 22. Let's hope it's enough. Yep, did a good job. Again, put that on the smallest one there, 22. Okay, now we have both ends stripped. All right, so the first thing you need to do when you're soldering pretty much any connector is tin the wires. Make sure those are twisted tight, and then you apply Heat with the soldering iron. And just melt solder into the wire. It's a little harder to do this on camera, it seems. You don't have to do the entire shield. Uh, if there's enough to hold it together, so you can cut it and match the other wires, it should be pretty good. So what I like to do after I've tinned the wires is trim them all blunt so they're all the same length. It's important that all the wires are the same length. 
if you cut one of them shorter and somebody trips on a mic cable, let's say, that one wire will take all the strain and most likely break off. So you want to make sure all wires are equal length. So now it's time to solder the connector. Now we're going to tin the connector first, but the first thing I want to tell you is the two things that you will definitely mess up. One of them is you'll forget to put the boot or the shell or the cover on the wire. This has to go on first before you solder the connector. Murphy's Law is when you solder a connector and it just looks beautiful, you're going to go and admire your work. You're going to look down and go, oh, sh I forgot to put the boot on. The second mistake you're going to make is you're going to wire connectors backwards. And that's because the thing that's confusing about connectors is whether they're upside down or right side up or whether it's a male or a female connector, the pin sequence reverses. Now, in this case, there are pin numbers on the connector. Right now, pin 2 is on my right. Flip it over, pin 2 is on my left. Rotate it, pin 2 is on my right. And that's the way I'm going to solder this connector is with the connector upside down. So pin 2 is on the right, pin 1 is on the left. So just like we tin the wire, we're going to now tin the connector. What you want to do is heat the cup up. and fill it with some solder. Don't overfill it. It's better to slightly underfill it. Make sure it flows nice. Because I'm right-handed, what I'm going to do is I always solder connectors left to right and that keeps me from having to cross over while I'm soldering and possibly burn or melt something. Alright, let's heat the connector. Insert the tin wire, warm it up, let it flow. Done. Okay, the center pin is pin 3. Pin 3 is low, so in this case that's the clear wire. Once again, bend it so it's ready to go right into position. Heat the XLR. Insert the wire. That's pin 2 on the right. EPXLR, insert it. Okay, straighten it out. It's still a little hot. Not bad. I've seen better, I've seen worse. There should be no bare wires exposed. Okay, now I'm going to show you a slightly more pro approach to wiring XLRs. This is Megami multi-pair microphone cable. It can be used for line level also. And by pairs, what it means is each pair is a different audio channel. So this is eight pair cable. In this one jacket is eight channels of audio. So take your razor blade again, recess the blade tip between your fingers, and then cut down the outer jacket. All right, that splits open nicely, then cut back here the excess. Remove this. All right, so in this case, I'm going to now remove this uh, nylon string, which is here to strengthen the cable and keep it from getting damaged when you pull on it. Uh, what a pain in the neck.
I'm not going to want this raw end of the cable here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a small piece of shrink to heat shrink tubing that when I'm done will completely smooth that over. Let me get this out of there. Slide the heat shrink over and when I'm finished I'm going to heat this and it will tighten up on that but for now I'm just going to leave it down on the cable. I'm going to choose a line. Here's channel 8. Alright, so let's wire channel 8. Similar procedure. Strip the outside jacket. But in this wire, you'll see that there's copper shield like the other wire, but there's also a bare wire inside. And that's called a drain wire. So what I want to do for this connector is I want to remove the copper shield and only leave the drain wire. So I'm going to twist this shield and then I'm going to actually remove it. Now I'm left with the two insulated wires. The gray wire is channel 8 hot, the clear wire is channel 8 cold, and this bare drain wire. Make sure you can see that. I don't want that drain wire bare, so I'm going to take some of this plastic Teflon tubing and I'm going to cut it so that it covers the drain wire. I do this before I tin the wire because it's just easier to get the Teflon tubing on. Okay. Now once again we're going to have this raw end here. So I'm going to grab some smaller heat shrink tubing about this size and I'm going to cut a small piece off. And again slide it over the wire. I'm not going to heat that yet. I'm going to heat that at the very end. So now I need to strip the hot and the cold. And just like the other wire, tin it. And this wire is really a lot nicer to work with than that first wire that I showed you. Much easier to do a neat connector. Alright, so I got that tinned. Now before I forget, I'm going to put the boot on. And put that piece of shrink back in. So now it's the same as soldering any other XLR connector. This XLR is already tinned. I don't tie the ground lug with pin 1 on an XLR connector and I'll explain that in more detail when I do my grounding video. Now we need to tighten up the shrink. I've got a heat gun and I'm going to heat the shrink around that jacket. As you can see, this connector is much tighter and much cleaner 
than the other one that we did with the regular mic cable. So we assemble the connector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up the shrink on this section here. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is label this cable. And uh, I really like this Dymo 4200. I've had it a couple of years. And one of the best things about it is you can buy aftermarket labels that are cheap. All right, so let's... There, so that's what I would call a bit more of a professional job. That's it for this week's episode. If you enjoyed this, please click subscribe and the notification bell. I also have a link below to a Patreon account and you can buy any of these tools you see in this video from links below.